So, dearest ones, I haven't thought this until the second what to do, the meditation. I'm compelled, I think, to do the blessing, the speech, but um, maybe there's a request. Any meditation you'd like me to lead, if, if there's a request. If there's not, it's okay. Any requests? Mary, what do you think I should do? I think I need blessing of the speech. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we all do. I think it's a good one. I, I, I never fail to be amazed by this amazing meditation. It's the most unlikely thing who would ever, I mean, you would just never learn a meditation somewhere. Let's do a meditation on the speech and the tongue. It just seems so hilarious. So let's do that one. I agree. Let's do it. Um, not Don't put it up yet, Mary. Just let's think about it for a second. You've got it there, Mary, or I shall put it up from my side. You've got it. Okay, good. All right. So not yet. Not yet. So just think, why would we do such an unusual thing? This is part of the meditation. So here we are for a little 30 minutes. We're going to do this, but think about it first. So, you know, so as we know from the Buddhist teachings, if you laying it, especially in the Lamb Room, if you put it all in order, Buddhist teachings in order, everything we learn should be in order, the simplest and the more advanced. So here, and it kind of initially it's boring to us. We hear that Lord Buddha says first, well, you should control your body and control your speech. Behave nicely. It's like do what your grandma says, behave nicely. And we just think it sounds boring, you know. What do you mean behave nicely? Because we don't comprehend the meaning. We just think you behave nicely because then you'll get praised by grandma. No, you, you behave nicely because you, we don't want to harm others, which means we don't want to put karmic seeds in our own mind, which will ripen in the future as our suffering. We totally and utterly miss this in our culture. We just get guilty, you know, because we'll get punished. Well, there's no punisher and there's no rewarder. We punish ourselves. We reward ourselves. So the very first level of practice, as they say, the lamas say, you know, when you're with others, you control your behavior. And when you're on your own, you can control your mind. So, of course, as we get advanced, we can do all three together. So, and if you can imagine if the world controlled their behavior, if all the people on the planet controlled their body and didn't punch and kill and steal and lie and harm and controlled their speech and didn't shout and yell and scream and abuse people behind backs, and there would not be suffering. You think at the gross level of suffering would not happen. It's kind of tremendous, really. The meaning is tremendous, you know. Because look at the gross level of suffering, the first kind of suffering, the suffering of suffering. Look at it, you know, it's harming others. And then what that does is, pro is produce our own future unbearable suffering. So by controlling our body and speech, we literally stop the, the first level of suffering in the future, which is the gross one. And on a day-to-day -day level, it's the first, you know, you harness the servants of the mind. You first control the servants of the mind, as Lama Zopa says, the slaves of the mind, which is the body and speech. So it's surprising to us because we just think of me as one big lump of kind of me, a big lump of me, one unified lump kind of plodding through life, you know. We know we've got body and speech in mind, but we don't, we don't think about it like that. So this is kind of revelation when we get it, when we understand the meaning. And so from one's own point of view, learning to harness the energy of our body and speech, focusing on that first, all our attention, which is mental, on that first, then we will already you help calm your mind down because you grab the servants and you calm them. And so that calms the mind down. It calms the boss down. So then, but it's, it's, it's got such good meaning, you know. And so this particular practice, because for most of us, like I say, we don't go around raping and killing too many people. But look at us, 99% of the problems we all have in our lives with relationships, with friends, with neighbours, with close friends, especially with family, it's because of speech, you know, uncontrolled speech. And, of course, in our culture, we, we, we don't think this way. We think, well, I'm allowed to say what I like. We feel it's like a right, you know. No one's going to tell me what to do because we don't think of it having, as having consequences. We don't think of cause and effect. We don't understand how to apply this logic of karma, you know. So the, remember here, the first one is that we, we are the beneficiary of controlling our speech. That we have to get that one first. We miss that in our culture. We think it just sounds like, you know, selfish. We totally don't understand. It's we are first the beneficiary and we should want that. We want to be happy. We don't want to suffer. So the very first level of practice, this is like self-compassion, is control our body, control our speech. So the speech one is what we're going to do here, this marvellous practice, you know. So it's coming from, it's, um, first of all, 
based in the view of karma, which is that every tiny word we say, you know, um, so seeds in our mind that, that ripen as our future experiences. And then, of course, we, we we also want to control our speech. Second, because we don't want we, we don't want to harm others because of compassion. But first, it's got to be compassion for ourselves. So here we're, we're using you know this unusual approach. It's coming from the Vajrayana system, really, of how we're constructed, which is we've got we've got gross body, which is this bag of bones which is mixed with our sensory consciousness. And then we have mental, subtle, the subtle body, which is this sort of subtle nervous system, 72,000 subtle channels coursing, going through our entire body. And within those channels are all these wind energy. This is the, the basic principle of matter on this planet from this perspective. We have earth, air, fire, and water. So all the wind energy, all the wind, the prana, this is similar to the Ayurvedic system, the the, you know, the Tibetan Buddhist system, the medical system, the Chinese system, the subtle wind energy coursing through all of these channels. And the interesting point is, from the Vajrayana perspective, our states of mind, our love, compassion, anger, jealousy, you know, you name it, all are inextricably linked to these winds. So, you know, by, so then speech is sound. Speech is sound, and that they say in Tantra that, that speech is wind, and the wind energy purely is mantra. Its purest nature is, is Sanskrit. The mantras are Sanskrit sounds. There's said to be something very, and then we have to think about this something pure about the Sanskrit sounds. You know, and this is so sound, sound is speech. And sound, the purer sound is Sanskrit, and that and that purifies our winds, the winds and our mind. So it's got enormous meaning if we look into it. You know, not just kind of being good girl, not like that. So with a very happy mind, delighted to do this practice. Let's put it up on the screen, Mary. And all you have to do is I'll lead the lead the visualization. And you just have to open your eyes to say the the different Sanskrit consonants, vowels, and then the then the um, dependent arising mantra. Yeah, so just keep, just, yeah, okay, what to do? It's big, isn't it? It's big, isn't it? What can you do? I want to see the people. Can you make it a bit narrower, Mary, so I can see the people? Just make it the whole page, narrow the PDF. Don't make the document smaller. Can you just narrow the PDF? Drag it in and make it narrower. Just from the bottom there, on the, on the right-hand bottom. That's it. No, that makes it smaller. What to do? Okay, never mind. Doesn't matter. Do what you can. That's okay. Can you do that? Where is it, Mary? Just put it up on the screen, Mary. Don't you worry. Do what you can. Whatever you've got. Just do it, Mary. Well, now I closed it, so I have to reopen it. Well, let me find a skinnier one. Okay, so it's a phone. Okay. No, no, don't you worry. Just find it and open it up again, yeah. Okay. So get your bodies comfortable while Mary's finding the document. Just uh, if you're sitting cross-legged, then have your back straight, obviously. Sitting up, your muscles are... We're sitting in a chair. Okay. So can you just make the document narrower, Mary? From the bottom, drag it over to the left and just make the document narrower. No, you're not looking at it. The document itself, down the bottom right-hand corner, you drag the right-hand corner, you drag the right hand, no, right over to the very edge, you know, to the very edge of the document at the bottom, you drag it over and just make it the document, you fill up less of the screen. Okay, forget it. Don't you worry. Mary, let it be. No, that makes the document smaller and keeps the document fat, you see. No, none of that. Maybe you can't do it on your non-Mac machine. You probably can't do it on the non-Mac machine, so don't you worry. Let it be. So then just get your body clear, people. Relax, get your body upright, your hands in the prayer, in the meditation mudra if you want to, in your lap. Um, your head slightly tilted forward, your chin tucked in, jaw relaxed, lips slightly apart. Eyes looking down, and then you just settle into this position because your body doesn't meditate, your mind does. So for about, you know, a few seconds, a few half a minute, 
just um, focus on your breath. Just anchor your mind, anchor your, your attention to the breath and just watch the breath go out and watch the breath go in. No drama. Let the thoughts come and go. Just steady your mind by focusing on the breath for about a minute, okay? So now we just we just imagine Buddha above our crown. Think like that. Okay. And then now this little refuge prayer, just very sweet. I take refuge in the three jewels. May I become a Buddha to benefit all. I take refuge in the three jewels. May I become a Buddha to benefit all. I take refuge in the three jewels. May I become a Buddha to benefit all. So now you just imagine now. Just imagine, okay? Imagine on your tongue, you imagine a, a Sanskrit syllable R. Clearly, if we don't know Sanskrit or Tibetan, we just visualize the Roman letters A H standing upright, okay, on your tongue. And now it turns into a moon disc, like a flat, a flat white cushion. A moon disc on your tongue. And then on this moon disk, there is a there's a there's um, a white om standing upright in the center. And then surrounded by the white, you know, the, first of all, the white vowels, the, all the Sanskrit vowels. Clearly, we don't know Sanskrit. We do how marvelous. And they're all standing, all these letters. Just imagine them stand, clockwise, going clockwise, standing upright around the white om on our tongue, the white vowels. Then going counterclockwise, you've got all the red consonants around the om and the white vowels. And then surrounding those, the white Sanskrit vowels and the red Sanskrit syllables, you've now got the the depend as Lama Zoparinte calls it, the, the 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 syllables of the of the dependent related heart mantra. We might say the the mantra of dependent arising, and they're kind of bluish, darkish blue, and they're going clockwise. So imagine all of this on your tongue. Just do your best. Use your creative imagination. White, red, and blue. So this, in fact, is a blessing the speech meditation, but as we can see when we do it, it's also kind of utilizing it to help purify our body and speech, body and mind as well. A lot of the practices do this, which is wonderful. So first what we do is we imagine, uh, what we do is we imagine, first of all, that we, we then we're going to put light goes out, the three color lights go out to all the 10 directions. North, south, east, west, northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest, up and down. And what it does, you imagine, is hook the energy, the pure energy of the blessed speech, the power of speech of all the Buddhas, all the Bodhisattvas, all the yogis, all the beings living in virtue, living in goodness, you know, this energy of all of them, this pure, powerful speech. Speech, you know, the power of speech, they say, is the main gift of the Buddha to us. 
And the power of speech means as a result of one, being silent, two, consciously refraining from saying negative words, and three, from doing lots of mantras like this, blessing our speech, literally making it powerful. And why do we want powerful speech? Well, first of all, we can't access the Buddha's mind and we're not, we're too gross. So out of compassion, Buddhas manifest in a body. But we, what's the point of looking at a body? It doesn't help. We have to hear the advice. So that's the speech. So it's the most profound gift we could have. So for us in our daily lives, we need the power of speech. We want people to respect our speech. We want people to believe us. We want people to do our wishes. We know how painful it is when no one pays attention or couldn't care about our speech. So we need to purify our speech to make it powerful, to make it beneficial, to make it useful. It's got such great meaning. We all want this. So all this energy of all the holy beings' powerful speech comes back with this light and comes back and dissolves, comes into the syllables on our tongue, making them all radiant and beautiful and vibrant and full of the energy of the blessed speech of all the holy beings. How amazing. So now we're going to imagine nectar, nectar dripping down, pouring down, filling our entire body, coming from the white syllables on our tongue. Our whole body is full of this blissful nectar, so delicious, so pure. And what this does is, in this case, totally purifies our bodies. So first thing, all the pains and aches and pains and stuff that we have now, all the, the heaviness of this body of ours, like lugging around, you know, a 10-ton weight, purifies all of that, makes our body light and pure. And particularly, especially, what you imagine what it does, is purify all the imprints in our mind from all the harm we've ever done since beginningless time to other sentient beings with our bodies. Look at the harm that sentient beings do to each other. And we've done all of this, especially as animals. We eat each other every day. We abuse and harm out of fear and suffering, you know. So all the karmic imprints from all of this we've ever done since beginning this time, totally eradicated. How amazing. Full of this blissful white nectar. As we recite three times the, um, the syllable, the, 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 uh, the, the vowels, imagine this. Filling us completely as we say the vowels. Om a a e e u u ri ri li li e e o a ang a svaha. Om a a e e u u ri ri li li e e o a ang a svaha. Om a a e e u u ri ri li li e e o a ang a svaha. Full of this nectar. And imagining now that our body is light and healthy and, and can only benefit others. Imagine this. Imagine now whoever sees you, touches you, you know, can only be benefited by your presence, by your body. How incredible. You know, full of this blessed energy. So now we visualize from the red consonants, radiant red nectar pouring down and up and filling our body entirely. And this time, of course, purifying the speech itself. I mean, even saying these sounds is also purifying the speech, but this time it's the speech. Imagine full of this blissful red nectar and thinking all your speech right now that you feel some uncomfortable, don't know what to say, not sure you're saying the right thing, feel confused when you talk, you know, not to mention all the harm we've ever done to others by lying, bad-mouthing behind backs, abusive speech, or just rabbiting on about nothing speech, because we know the pain of it, people not believing our words, people not trusting our speech, people not interested in what we say, all of this pain caused as a result of all of this, all of this totally purified, full of this radiant red nectar. How amazing. 
Om ka 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 ganga cha 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 janya ta 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 dana ta 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 dana pa pa ba ba ma yara lava sha sha sa hak sa sva ha Om ka 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 ga ga cha 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 janya ta 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 dana ta 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 dana pa 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 ba ma yara lava sha sha sa hak sa sva ha Om ka 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 ga nga cha 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 janya ta 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 dana ta 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 dana pa 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 ba ma ya la la wa sha sha sa ha sa sva ha All of this red nectar, all of our rubbish speech, all the nonsense from the past, totally purified. So now thinking, we have the power of speech and it's such that anyone who hears us even our laugh, even saying good morning will be benefited. You know, imagine this. Imagine how marvelous this would be. People believe our words. People will trust our words. People want to hear our words. We're able to give advice. Our wishes will be fulfilled when we ask for something. We all want this. So imagine this now, the result, full of this blissful red nectar. How incredible. So now the nectar, blue nectar comes from the blue syllables, the dependent related heart mantra. And of course, dependent on realizing, dependent on arising is the best way to realize emptiness. And this is what cuts all the delusions, realizing emptiness. So imagine this blue nectar filling us completely from these letters. And this time instantly purifying the mind. What that means is just right now, all the ego, the result of ego grasping, which is fear and anxiety and attachment and anger and jealousy and depression and low self esteem and all this hopelessness, all the arrogance, all the hurt we feel, you know, from all these delusions, which are the voices of ego. Imagine it, annihilated, instantaneously gone. Because that's what Buddha has found that these are not at the core of our being. And think of all the karmic imprints left in our mind from trillions of lifetimes of the negative imprints, the, the, the negative states of mind, gone, disappeared, purified by this blissful blue nectar for the ends. Om ye dhamma hetu pabawa hetun teshan tatagato iavadat teshan chayo niroda evam vadi maha shamana ye svaha. Om ye dhamma hetu prabhava hetun te shan tatagato iava datta shan chayo niroda evam vadi maha shamana ye svaha. Om ye dhamma hetu prabhava hetun te shan tatagato iava datta shan chayo niroda evam vadi maha shamana ye svaha. Totally full. This radiant blue nectar, and the delusions utterly, completely disappeared. Because they're not at the core of our being, you see. There's no intrinsic, there's nothing, nothing essential about them. And they're not they're not valid because they're they've made up nonsense. There's no basis for them. There's no object that they that they refer to that is existing. They're fantasies made up by our mind. So if they're made up by our mind, our mind can eliminate them. Of course, it's a slow process. But that's the job of being a Buddhist. So imagine they're gone. So then think of it. If they're gone, what's left? Well, guess what, people? Love, wisdom, compassion, kindness, courage, confidence. We've got to realize this. These are our true nature. So these now can grow infinitely because there's nothing holding them back. These are who we really are. Imagine, full of all this. And you know what? The bonus of this? Bliss. Joy, fulfillment, bliss. Don't underestimate that word. It's literally true. That's the consequence of reading the mind of the rubbish and growing the goodness to perfection. Be so delighted. And now having a mind that's perfect wisdom, of course, which means you can see the minds of others, you can see the past, you can see the future, and you know exactly how to benefit sentient beings with, guess what, your body and your speech. That's why Buddha's manifest in bodies, because we're too, we're, you know, poor, ignorant, sentient beings. We can't, we can't access their mind. They don't need a body. 
They take a body for our sake and they take speech. They manifest their thoughts in these complicated sounds called speech. How kind of them. So we can understand and become our own Buddha. So now imagine that, first of all, on our tongue, the depenerated heart mantra, the blue syllables, dissolve into the red, uh, red consonants. The red consonants dissolve into the white vowels. And the white vowels dissolve into the om. The om dissolves into the white moon disk. And the white moon disk dissolves into the um into the R. And that turns into pink colored nectar. Can you imagine? This is so sweet. And that dissolves into your tongue. So now imagine, it says here, your, your tongue becomes a Vajra nature, indestructible. Nothing can harm or take away the power of your speech now. You know, your, your sounds are more powerful. Your mantras are more powerful. Your virtuous speech is more powerful and more beneficial. This is what we want. Imagine this, be so delighted. So think that all the power of the speech of all the holy beings is within yours. You, and then think, as Rameshay says, think, I have perfected my speech. And the second the sentient beings hear your speech, it pacifies their emotional and pain, you know, their suffering. And then whatever you say gets actualized. I mean, how incredible. So be so delighted. So by thinking in this way, the power of your speech becomes marvelous. And whatever you recite is a, is a million times more powerful. Your speech doesn't become like gossip. So we delight in this and we're so happy. And then make a decision today. Today, we have much left of today you've got. You think, I am going to watch my speech like a hawk. Don't worry about controlling your mind when you're with other people. You can do that on your own. When you're with others, you make a decision. I'm going to watch my speech. I'm going to control my speech. It's a miraculous practice. And you are so happy if you can do it. So make that decision. You've got to make that decision. It won't happen otherwise. And then at the end of the day, you purify it. You regret the rubbish speech. You pu you have compassion for those you harmed. And then you vow to control it at least 24 hours a day. It's such a powerful practice. You'll be so pleased. You won't have arguments. You don't do it passive aggressively. You know, people are like that. Don't do not like that. It's a conscious, intentional decision to control your speech. It's a tremendous practice. So we dedicate. This sweet little prayer, I can't believe it. May my tongue have all the courage of the ones gone to bliss. About the power manifesting from these glorious words, may all sentient beings be subdued. May whatever words I say, may all these actions be accomplished instantly. That's it. I just love this practice. It gives me such pleasure. So be happy, people. All right. Such good, worthwhile 30 minutes. We just spent 30 minutes. And it's gone like a dream. It's all over. But we did a lot of good work in the 30 minutes. So delight. Because remember that nothing goes astray from your mind. Everything gets stored there. So be happy. We've stored it with delicious things for 30 minutes. Okay. All right, darling people. Thank you so much. Happy to see you all. So pleased. Thank you very much, Mary. Much love to everybody. Thank you, sweethearts. Everyone. Jung Chub Sem Chong Wimbo Che, Ma Kye Panam, Kye Gu Chi, Kye Pa Nyang Pa, Me Pa Yang, Gong Ne Gong Tu Pa Pa Shok. May Lama Zabu Che, come back quickly. Okay. We need him. Thank you, Venerable. Thank you, Venerable Ruby.